Okay, so welcome to this first video in the playlist on pain. In this video, what we're going to talk about is cutaneous nociceptors. Okay, so cutaneous nociceptors is the title for this video. Now, uh, we're going to start off by just discussing a little bit of terminology, and then we'll move on to discuss the structure of the skin and uh, the anatomical structure of these nociceptors. Okay, right. So, what I firstly want to start off with is what is the difference between pain and nociception, okay? So, let's begin with what pain is. Pain means the conscious unpleasant experience, okay? So, for instance, if you uh, stand on a pin, okay, you get a horrible uh, conscious experience, basically. That is what is meant by pain, that horrible experience. It's very difficult to define, although we all know what it is, okay? So, pain refers to the conscious experience. Now, we do not understand pain at all, because we don't understand consciousness. We don't understand how you can connect loads of neurons together and then somehow produce something that is capable capable of conceiving of its own existence, okay? That is completely ununderstood. We don't even, we can't even comprehend how to build something like that, okay? We may never understand that, okay? Uh, so, pain is on the level of the entire brain. It has to be, because consciousness is on the level of the entire brain. Okay, right. So, we don't really have a hope at all of knowing how uh, you actually generate that conscious painful experience, okay? Whereas nociception is something far more crude and something far easier to understand, okay? It's something we do understand. Nociception is all about how you take a noxious stimulus, which just means a painful stimulus. So, um, the uh, fancy name for a painful stimulus is to call it a noxious stimulus, okay? So, nociception is all about taking noxious stimuli and converting it into action potentials in um, sensory neurons, basically. So, AP for action potential. Okay, right. Uh, so, nociception is really just the um, transduction of uh, noxious stimuli into uh, action potentials within sensory neurons. Okay, and that's something that's far easier to understand, and something far easier to quantify and define and study. Okay, right. So, there's the first uh, little um, definitions that I want to give. Okay, the next definitions I want to give are the difference between a nociceptor and a nociceptor, because this is going to save a whole lot of pain, okay, later. So, basically, a nociceptor does not refer to a receptor. It does not refer to a receptor that can detect a noxious stimulus, okay? So, it doesn't refer to a protein. Instead, it refers to the entire neuron, okay? So, this is a neuron uh, which is involved in uh, reacting to noxious stimuli, basically. So, a neuron uh, which is activated by a noxious stimulus, okay? And generally, they're activated by more than one type of noxious stimulus. So, a neuron which is activated by noxious stimuli, okay? And therefore, is going to be involved in uh, nociception. Okay, so... Right, so then now, the concept of a uh, nociceptor is then the concept uh, of a protein or a receptor which actually responds to the noxious stimuli, okay? So basically, how can a neuron respond to a noxious stimulus? Well, basically, usually it's because within the membrane of the neuron, you will have uh, some sort of nociceptor which will respond to the noxious stimulus and cause a change in the electrical potential difference across the cell membrane of the neuron and then trigger the firing of action potentials. Okay, so this is a receptor for a noxious stimulus. Okay, so that's the difference between a nociceptor and a nociceptor. So don't get confused thinking that a nociceptor is a nociceptor. A nociceptor is the name for a neuron which reacts to noxious stimuli. Okay, right. 
So, we are going to talk about cutaneous nociceptors. So, uh, nociceptors, neurons which react to the noxious stimuli uh, which are within the skin. So we're going to begin with a little bit of a reminder of the structure of the skin then. Okay, so, uh, basically, the skin starts with the epidermis. So the epidermis is the outermost layer of the skin. Okay, so this is all epidermis here. And basically, the epidermis sort of invaginates in a little bit uh, and has hair follicles from time to time. Okay, so this is an invagination inwards and this is going to be a hair follicle. So, let me show this. So here is the epidermis invaginating in like so. Okay, and then sitting in there, what we're going to have is a hair. Okay, like so. Okay, right. So I'll colour in the hair in, I think I'll do it in, I want. I haven't really got the best colour for it, I think orange is probably, I haven't got a brown, uh, so orange I think is going to be our best fit. Okay, right, so here is our hair sitting within its hair follicle, okay, so here is a hair, right, okay, then we have... Uh, the epidermis is this outermost layer that I've drawn here, and we won't go into the details of looking at the different layers of the epidermis. We'll just summarise it all as one here. So this is the epidermis. Okay, right. Now, underneath the epidermis, then, you have the dermis, which is the next layer down. And I'll take this from the base of the derm epidermis, rather, down to here. Okay, so this now represents uh, the dermis. Okay, then underneath the dermis, what you then have is a layer of subcutaneous tissue which contains a huge number of fat cells. Okay, so this next layer of the skin is going to be subcutaneous tissue, sometimes called the subdermis. Okay, so this is subcutaneous tissue and it's mainly full of fat cells. And of course, uh, depend. Oops, not subcontinuous subcutaneous, okay, depending on uh, where um, we're actually looking at, i.e. which portion of the body we're looking at, you'll have a different uh, level of subcutaneous tissue, basically. So there's subcutaneous tissue. So, for instance, if you look at the abdominal region, you'll have generally a lot more subcutaneous tissue than if, for instance, you look at the shin. Okay, uh, so depending on which portion of skin, well, where, where in the body you have taken your portion of skin that you're looking at, you'll have a differing level of subcutaneous tissue. Okay, right. Uh, then finally, underneath the subcutaneous tissue, you then have a very dense layer of connective tissue known as the deep fascia. Okay, so this is called the deep fascia. Okay, right. So, uh, let's talk about uh, the structures within all of this. Okay, so, firstly, off the side of the um, hair follicle that we've got here, often you can have um, sebaceous glands coming off the sides of the hair follicle. So this here, which I think I'll colour in in purple, this will represent a sebaceous gland. Now, they will be secreting sebum into the hair follicle. Okay, so this is a sebaceous gland. Sebum is a sort of oily uh, substance, okay, which lubricates the skin. Sebaceous gland. It's kind of like uh, your uh, inbuilt moisturizer. Okay, right. Also associated with every hair follicle, uh, you have a piece of smooth muscle uh, called an erector pili muscle. Okay, and this is responsible for erecting the hair muscle. Okay, so at the moment I've drawn my uh, hair very, very erect, basically. Okay, so it's sticking straight up. But usually, the hair will be sort of at a slant like this, and when the erector pili muscle contracts, that will erect the hair. So this is an erector pili muscle. Okay, and the reason, of course, that you'd want to do that is if you're in very cold conditions, then the idea is that if you erect all of your hairs, okay, uh, known as goosebumps, uh, then you will trap 
a, a layer of air over your skin because basically the hair, uh, the hairs that all stick up on the surface of the skin, those will uh, prevent the flow of air over the surface of the skin. And they will hopefully try and keep a layer of warm air over the skin so that you're not continuously getting uh, the exchange of this warm air for cold air, basically. You're trying to prevent the flow of air over the skin because if you continuously have a flow of air over the skin, then new, fresh, cold air is continuously coming in contact with the skin. And that way, uh, you'll lose more heat, basically. So... In red here, this is the erector pili muscle. Okay, right. Uh, then, um, you also are going to have uh, arterioles and venules in here. So, let's draw some of those. So, here, let's say this is an arteriole. So, in the subcutaneous tissue, you have the big arterioles and the big venules. So, here's a big arteriole and here's a big venule. And then smaller arterioles and venules will branch off these large ones which are in the subcutaneous tissue. And they will go up to the dermis and they'll go all the way up uh, to the bottom of the epidermis. They don't go into the epidermis. The epidermis itself is avascular. It doesn't have blood vessels within it. Okay, but the blood vessels will go right up to the base of the epidermis and they'll form very dense capillary beds at the base of the epidermis. Okay, and then of course you'll have venules bringing the blood back to the major venule in the subcutaneous tissue. Okay, now, uh, just to emphasize the fact that most of the subcutaneous tissue is fat, I'll color it in yellow here. So there's loads and loads of fat cells in the subcutaneous tissue here. Right, so what does, the, um, what does the dermis mainly consist of? The subcutaneous tissue consists of fat cells. The epidermis is the uh, growing layer of cells. So the epidermis is just cell after cell after cell, okay? And the cells here are known as keratinocytes, okay? So the cells that make up the epidermis are called keratinocytes, okay? Uh, so what is the dermis made up of? Well, the dermis is made up of loads of connective tissue, and the two major connective tissues uh, that the dermis consists of are collagen and elastin. Okay, so you have a lot of collagen and a lot of elastin, which are both proteins in the uh, dermis. Okay, you then have structures which span between the dermis here, which is a layer of connective tissue, and the dent sorry, the deep fascia down here, which is also a layer of connective tissue. Okay, so you have these little sort of branches of connective tissue between the dermis here, which is a layer of connective tissue, and the deep fascia. Okay, and this connection here, this is known as a skin ligament. Okay, so the connective tissue um, connections between the deep fascia and the uh, dermis is known as a skin ligament. Okay, so this is a skin ligament. Okay, right. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.